Hello viewers, hope you are all doing well. In today's video, we will be studying about the distribution, types and status of one of the most important natural resources that is the water resource. Now as we know, water is a major component of an organism's body and in fact it is considered as a, as a universal solvent. On the earth's surface, 71% that is almost three-fourth of the earth's surface is covered in water. However, most of it is salty ocean water and it is only 2.7% which is fresh water available for use. Even amongst this 2.7%, 75% is locked in the form of glaciers and ice caps on the mountains. So glaciers are found in the Antarctic region or in the Arctic region and roughly around 5% is found in the ice caps of mountains. It is 22.6% groundwater which is actually available for use by the human population. We also have additionally 2.2% of surface water that includes the rivers and the streams and the atmospheric moisture. So all of this comprises of the 2.7% fresh water that is available for use. As you can see, the available water is very less and that is the major reason for water crisis even amongst big countries. Now this was about the distribution of water resources on the earth. Let's see the types of water resources. So water resources can be broadly divided into surface water resources and ground water resources under fresh water. And apart from this, we also have salt water resources. Surface water resources can be further divided as water which is found. So basically surface water is water which is found on the surface of the land and it is replenished by precipitation. It is lost by evaporation but it comes back in the form of precipitation or in the form of rainfall or snowfall. It is this surface water which is ultimately going to get discharged to the oceans as well. So surface water can be further divided as rivers, lakes and wetlands. Now lakes are the still water or the stagnant water that is that can be called as the lentic ecosystem that is a water which is standing which is not moving so that is the lentic ecosystem or the lakes. The lotic ecosystem are the rivers the flowing water is also called as the lotic ecosystem and we have wetlands which are mainly including the mangroves, the marshes, the swamps that comes under the wetlands. So all of these are considered as the surface water type. The second type is groundwater. Groundwater is very important because it is located beneath the earth's surface in the soil. It is protected by the soil and the rocks. So not much evaporation occurs. And this groundwater along with the body of rock or sediment that is protecting it or which is present between the groundwater is called as the aquifer. So aquifer is a term that is denoted for the body of porous rock or the sediment which is saturated or covered with or completely filled with groundwater. Now the aquifer can be a confined aquifer as well as an unconfined aquifer. A confined aquifer is the one which is present below the impenetrable layers or the impermeable layer of clay. Whatever is present below the layer of clay you can say which is you know farther to reach is called as the confined aquifer and the unconfined aquifer is what is present directly below the soil directly below the water table. So water table as you can see in this picture is the boundary it is the boundary between the soil surface and the area where the groundwater is available. It is present. The groundwater is saturating the spaces between the rocks, between the sediments. That boundary is what we call as the water table. Beyond this unconfined aquifer, we find a layer of clay or we find an impenetrable layer or an impermeable layer and below that impermeable layer, whatever is present, that is called as the confined aquifer. So this was about the groundwater which is present in the form of aquifers below the soil. We also have salt water or the oceanic water or the sea water which is unavailable for use but that is what is present more on the earth's surface. So these are the different types of water resources. Now when we see the status of use of the water resources, water resources are mainly even across the world mainly they are used for irrigation. So Brazil is the country which is having the highest volume of freshwater resources followed by Russia and Canada. But in all the countries, freshwater consumption is mainly for irrigation. Almost 69% is used for irrigation and farming. This is followed by industrial use. Almost 23% is used for industrial purposes. Roughly around 7% is used for domestic purposes, that is for household purpose. And rest of it, that is recreation, is almost less than 1%. So this is how the freshwater is being utilized by all the countries. This is the general status of use. India being a being an agrarian nation, being a nation which is very much involved in agriculture, 
in india 85% of the water is being used for agriculture so where the world's average is around 69% in india even though we have only 4% of the world's water resources but we are having around 18% of the world's population so we have to we have much more mouths to feed and our economy is mainly based on agriculture due to which 85% of the fresh water resources is used for agriculture in india now the water resources are mainly under the threat because of water scarcity pollution of water and conflict amongst the different nations or states regarding a water body due to all of these problems we are having a lot of threat to every water resource across the world and that has led to a lot of conflicts which we'll be looking at in a different video so the surface water and the ground water are the major sources of fresh water and let us see how they are being over exploited so surface water is being over exploited mainly because of the increasing population so when we have an increased population there is increase in the demand for water especially due to urbanization and in fact waste water is also generated a lot and that waste water needs to be treated so that increasing population is one of the major reasons for over exploitation of surface water the second reason is the expansion of economy that is industrialization tourism entertainment all of this leads to expansion and that requires more water not only for the supply but also for the cleaning up for the sanitation we also have climate change to attribute to because climate change has affected the water cycle so higher the temperatures more is the evaporation it should lead to more precipitation but what happens is some areas receive excessive precipitation that is it leads to floods and other areas you have less precipitation it leads to droughts so climate change is also a major problem that has you know messed up with the use of surface water or you can say that over exploitation has led to even this problem to occur and lastly pollution pollution is wherein the quality of the water is deteriorating so this is mainly happening due to the emptying or dumping of sewage as you can see here this is a picture of vartur lake in uh, uh, bangalore in india where you can see that there is pollution which is led to foaming the industries are dumping their waste into the river or into the lake due to which there is foaming and ultimately that is again exploiting our surface water body so now that lake is of no use you cannot use it for drinking purpose because of pollution so these are some of the reasons why there is over exploitation of surface water body similarly we also have over exploitation of ground water now when there is over exploitation of ground water when we pump out excessively when we take out too much of ground water for our use the first problem that it can lead to is land subsidence as you can see here this is an image from bangkok bangkok has been sinking 10 mm every year and the major reason for this is excessive extraction of ground water so land subsidence occurs when there is too much extraction of ground water which leads to a loss of support under the ground and the ground just sits in that is what you call as the land subsidence not only bangkok there are many other places as well even new orleans in louisiana is has seen a lot a very high level of land subsidence so this is one of the major problems that can occur when there is over exploitation of ground water the second problem is lowering of water table so wells are unable to reach ground water level because we have already pumped out so much so what happens is we have to further pump or we have to pump deeper we have to keep digging the wells we have to keep extending the depth of the wells and that leads to lowering of the water table as you can see here the water table was initially here now it has lowered much below the third problem that can happen due to over exploitation of ground water is the reduced surface water supplies now ground water and surface water are interconnected so when we dig out too much of the ground water that ultimately leads to the surface water levels also coming down so the surface water supply also starts diminishing as you can see in this picture and lastly it also causes contamination of the ground water due to pollutants from the gas storage tanks uh, tanks or from leakage of the septic tanks there can be pollution of ground water that again is a problem that is associated with the over exploitation of ground water so these are the different reasons and problems attached to the over exploitation of surface water and ground water and when we over exploit a resource it leads to several other problems like floods and droughts which we will be looking at at the other videos I hope this class was useful thank you